As I walk through nature, as I travel from place to place and I'm amazed at the wonderful creatures that God has created, as I touch the leaves and walk on the grass and I amaze myself thinking that this great God who has created all that is, is my God. It not only brings tears to my eyes and my heart, but it makes me to bow down in adoration to the great God that we serve. If there's one thing about nature that amazes me is that there's, even though it appears as though things happen because the way it wants to happen, it happens because nature follows a very careful process. Take, for example, the cycles that we have on the earth, the water cycle, where water comes down in, from the clouds, goes down to the ground, and through various processes that take place, it evaporates back into the air and comes back down. And this cycle continues, sustaining life. I realize that, yes, the God who created the universe, our creator, our savior, the God who said, let there be light, and there was light, is not a, an apposite God. But he is a God who believes in order, he is a God who believes in process. He is a God who has a plan for how things might work out. And if we do follow his plan, we'll discover that his plan is higher than our plan, better than our plan. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Today we're going to look at one aspect of creation. In fact, one aspect that demonstrates a process which reveals to us that indeed God thought out carefully what he instituted on this earth. We're going to talk about the process called photosynthesis. I remember when I was in school, in that biology class that I loved sometimes, I remember we had to memorize certain terms where in the exam, if we were asked, we had to just write down what we remember. And I remember this term, photosynthesis. At that time, I had, a, I had the meaning in my mind that simply said, photosynthesis is the process whereby plants, chlorophyll in the plants, use the sunlight and the energy from the sun to make food. That's the the definition I had memorized when I was taking biology while at school. And I'm sure you too must have come across this definition of photosynthesis. In fact, photosynthesis, the word, comes from two Greek words. The first portion is the word for light, and the other portion is synthesis. When you put it together, it means putting together putting together light with that which is in the plant. It is a composition. It is a process that con converts carbon dioxide and organic compounds, especially sugars, from the energy that we gather from sunlight. Photosynthesis is vital on this earth, as well as maintaining the normal oxygen level in the atmosphere Nearly all life forms depend on it directly as a source of energy or indirectly as an ultimate source of energy in their food. Consider with me to, at this moment the amount of energy trapped by photosynthesis is immense. And I want you to hold your seats while you listen to the amount the amount of energy that is absorbed by photosynthesis on the earth is approximately 100 terawatts, which is about six times larger the power consumption of human civilization. As well as energy, 
Photosynthesis is also the source of carbon in all organic compounds and organisms. Yes, in all photosynthetic organisms, they convert around 100 million tons of carbon into biomass per year. This fact alone blows my mind as to the importance and the incredible potential of photosynthesis. The next time you pick a leaf that has fallen or you look at a leaf in the tree, don't just look at it and squash it and break it and throw it away saying that it is just a leaf. In every leaf, there is miracles, countless miracles taking place beyond our wildest imagination. Although photosynthesis can happen in different ways, in different species, some features are always the same. And I'm going to take some time to go through some of those features. The, fe the process always begins by, by the energy from the light that is absorbed by proteins in the plants, which is called photosynthetic reaction centers. And these photosynthetic reaction centers contain chlorophyll. When I was a little boy and I learned that it is chlorophyll that uh, traps the sunlight and converts it into energy, now I understand why the teacher did not use the phrase photosynthetic reaction centers. It's a fascinating term for this, that contain these chlorophylls. Photosynthesis is the main means by which plants, algae, and many other bacteria, bacteria producing compounds survive in this world. They transform oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. The proteins that gather water and light for so photosynthesis are embedded within cell membranes. At this point, let me remind you, when we talk about cell membranes, we are talking about an extremely, extremely thin membrane that contains this chlorophyll. The simplest way is that chlorophyll are neatly arranged in these leaves where protein can be used and trapped as well for the process of photosynthesis. In plants, for example, photosynthesis takes place in organelles called chloroplasts. As I speak to you, my mind goes back to that biology class. As I share with you these terms, I, I marvel at, I, I think that I should have paid a little more attention in my biology class. So forgive me for reading this to you. A typical plant cell contains 10 to 100 chloroplasts. The chloroplast is enclosed by a membrane. And this membrane is further enclosed by a phospholipid inner membrane. It has an outer membrane and an intermediate membrane. Just stay with us. When we get back, we'll explore a little more this process of photosynthesis.